Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the channel for another South by Southwest 2022 interview. I have the team behind Spin Me Around here. Jeff, Allison, Aubrey, Molly, Alessandro. Hello. Congratulations. And thank you for this very interesting but very good time. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Perry. <laughs> All right. So with a festival premiere, a lot of our audience will not know what your movie is about just yet. So, Jeff, I'll give you these honors. Will you give us a brief description of Spin Me Around? Yeah. So Spin Me Around is about a um, manager at a, a franchise restaurant in America who wins an all expense paid trip to Italy, to the country, to the um, Restaurants Institute to learn about food, wine and culture. Um, and she thinks it's going to be this romantic getaway, and it turns out to be a little bit more dark and messed up. Fair description right there. So I have a, I have a very random, silly group question to start here, but I started to think about it myself. For, for each of you, you get to go on a getaway courtesy of the food brand you eat the most or the food chain that you visit the most. What is the company that you go on this trip with, and what do you look forward to most about that trip? Uh, I would get Pellegrino trip and I guess I would go to Italy, which would be great. And that's perfect. Okay. I can't think of a brand. I was going to say, I love hummus. I love Greek food. Maybe I could go to Greece and I'd be eating lots of Greek salads. Although I feel like I've never been to Greece and I've heard that Greek food is maybe actually different than I think of as like Americanized Greek food. So maybe that would, but give me some, you know, olives. Mm. <laughs> like maybe there's not as much hummus in actual Greek food now. And now this is terrible. Mediterranean <laughs> food. I don't know. <laughs> mm -hmm. I think I would go try different ramens and go to Tokyo and Kyoto and go to all the different best ramen places in Japan. Okay like that mm -hmm. i like that yeah sometimes i like to um have lacquerol um li licorice um hard candies um they're from scandinavia so um which i love love to go to sweden or norway or any of the nordic countries and have some really bitter candies yum uh I, well i i guess my soft spot is peanut m m's so is there like a is there a um, like a factory like Charlie and the Chocolate Factory kind of thing where they make those? Because I could go there. Hershey, Pennsylvania. Hershey, Pennsylvania. Yeah, Hershey, Pennsylvania. Oh, that's where I'd go. That sounds good. Yeah. You make you make me feel better about my answer. You all pick these exotic locations, but I'm like the peanut butter company. I want to visit their farm in Arkansas so I can make <laughs> peanut butter. Yeah. Oh, that's terrible. But then I just heard I, mean, I heard peanuts are bad for your prostate, so maybe I should, no. maybe I should get a new uh, weakness. I just read that they're the fourth healthiest nut that you could eat, but maybe that's peanuts? just for women. Peanuts? Yes, I was shocked. Yes. Yeah, I'm shocked. I would as think as long it's like as a you don't shock. care about your Walnuts, urine flow. Pistachios, something else. Walnuts are the most healthy. They're very good for your brain. Walnuts are the most healthy. And pistachios, I was surprised, was the second one. And Brazil nuts, I knew, but you shouldn't eat too many. But they're good for your thyroid. Mm. And, and then peanuts, and I guess. Walnuts are good for breast cancer, breast, preventing breast cancer. Oh, oh good. Okay. I heard green tea is good for that, too. Two things I love. <laughs> I've already learned so much on this call. Thank you for that. <laughs> Um, Allison and Jeff, I'm going to throw this next question to you. Can you tell everybody what inspired this idea to begin with? There's, there's a lot going on in this film. So what was the idea that kicked it all off? Well, it was Jeff's original idea. And pre I think pretty much right after we finished shooting The Little Hours about five or six years ago, uh, that was such a great experience and shooting in Italy is so, it's so beautiful there. It's so fun. We all love the culture and the food. And I, I sort of think he came up with this idea right after we shot that just as a, as a means of just getting back to Italy and doing another movie there. Um, but the movie didn't come together at that time. And then in the interim, he and I wrote Horse Girl together and co-produced that and made that in Los Angeles. And it went so well. 
it was such a good experience. Molly was in that as well. It's a, you know, it's all the, the Jeff Baina players. So after we did Horse Girl, Jeff sort of circled back and was like, I have this idea about these managers going to Italy and the trip is not what they expect. And then it kind of spins out of control. And at the time he had like a 10 page outline written and was like, do you want to come on board and kind of flesh this out with me? And so we did expand it into a 35 page outline. You know, The Little Hours and Horse Girl were both improvised movies based on outlines. And that's what we intended for this. But then because of COVID, um, we had a lot of time on our hands and we ended up just writing the whole script <laughs> together over Zoom, uh, which was really fun because we got to just, yeah, really kind of pull all the characters apart in different directions and uh, hone in on some things in terms of my character and her arc over the course of the movie and things like that. And and as usual in my experiences writing with Jeff, it's it, it's a lot of pulling from personal experience. You know, in this case, I feel like Jeff came in with this the 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 broad strokes of the idea for the whole movie. And then we kind of go back and forth telling crazy stories from our lives and a lot of them get incorporated into the film. All right, so bringing up the idea of many of you working together before, Molly and Aubrey, I'll throw this next question to you. So you've both worked with Jeff as a director a number of times now. What is it about his sets and his way of working that keeps you coming back for more? Well, Jeff has an amazing visual ability. Like you just feel so confident when he's shooting something with his eye and how he sees stuff and how he shoots stuff. Even if he just takes a photograph, it's like the best photograph ever. So the way he has superior visual ability, and then on top of that, he's very funny. So that combination is very rare in Hollywood, I feel. Somebody usually has one or the other. Not They're not able to shoot comedy with beauty. So that's one thing I just adore about Jeff. Um, and I will say that um, I think Jeff has like a really amazing talent to write stuff that is so funny, but also has this kind of underlying sweetness to it. He loves his he loves his characters so much, and um, and it's a it's just a very specific tone and really unique. And it's really nice to to work with someone that that has a completely fully realized vision in their in their minds and it's kind of like you can kind of just like let go and just you know go along for the ride because he really knows what he wants so it's like a really it's a really it's a really fun uh process as an actor because you feel like you're in really good hands all the time I feel like that balance you described is what keeps me coming back for more as a viewer so i very much agree with that all right, Alessandra, so this is your first time working with a whole bunch of creators here who have worked together pretty often. So what was it like stepping into their world? And then was there anything about the environment on set that kind of made you go like, I see why they keep coming back for more and keep doing this? Uh, I kind of felt, yeah, I mean, it, I, I kind of felt like an alien who had been dropped into their midst. And uh, because I had like... Weirdly, there's this big, there's a big divide in in movies between like the comedy people and the dramatic people or whatever, and and some of these actors like uh, Evil Hag and and uh, Allison Brie uh, are starting to kind of like you know uh, you know span both of those worlds, but I uh, but for sure like everybody in the comedy world knows each other really well. And a lot of them came up together in improv stuff and, you know, Chicago and all that. And, um, and uh, where, you know, and the same is true in, on the other side. Uh, and obviously I've, I've worked with a lot of people, but weirdly just like I had no connection with anybody uh, on this movie. And um I just was sent little hours and I just thought it was so funny and so real. Um, and so I, I, I just, I love the style of it. Um, but yeah, no, I, not only was I like in a way kind of the odd man out because everybody had worked together and knew each other, but 
I, for some reason, I can't remember why, started like two weeks later than everybody else. And this was like one of the first movies back from COVID where everybody was shooting again and everybody was staying in this hotel in Tuscany and they'd been there for like two weeks and it's just been raging together for like, you know, the whole time until I got there. And they were all like, uh, just, you know, they'd been up till like this, watching the sun come up almost every night. In fact, the night that I arrived there, I was told the next day that at like 6 a.m. that next morning that they were temp they'd been talking about coming and banging on my door to wake me <laughs> up and just like, you know, do some <laughs> prank on me or some shit. And, and then they'd like gotten too shy. Of it. Well, well, we did, we did, uh, we did like a, we did a terror. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. Did you read my cards? Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, so it was like, yeah, I was thrown into their midst, but um, they're just the kind of coolest crowd. And uh, I was just feeling so lucky to be, part of them and I spent most of the time kind of like with this shit eating grin on my face and like you know like little slits for eyes you know well because everybody was so funny and I didn't really know what to say also remember your first day when we took you to the beach yeah yeah that was a great first day great first day, day we just like <laughs> piled in a convertible and there was like Italian pop music playing and we went down to some like little club down on the near Pisa, right? And then Forza de Marmion. Yeah. Wait, did something happen that I'm forgetting except for just like a perfect day? No, we took you into the like we baptized you. We oh yeah, you they had ocean. like a weird like good. seance. There was like a group, like a chain. Everybody formed a chain around me or something, right? Oh yeah. <laughs> It was a great. I should have worn a speedo. I should have worn a speedo. That would have freaked you guys out. And now Alessandro, when he shows up, speaks fluent Italian to all the waiters. Remember that? Like when we had dinner, you would be like, "Lasciatemi morire." That's what I was saying. That was they didn't understand a word I was saying. You guys just thought that I was talking to me. You know, it is mine. So, Alessandro, I would not mind seeing you doing more comedies because I feel like it's been a little while since I've seen you in a movie like this. So working with such big powerhouses in that particular genre, is there anything you saw someone else do on this set that, you know, you're kind of putting in your back pocket and waiting to do on another comedy that you you're a part of? I don't know. I mean, the funny thing was that, like, these guys were all sort of heavy improvers, but none of this movie was improv Right. I mean, it was like very scripted in a great way. And I think, thank God for me, because like if, if it had been the other way around, then I would have just like stood there like a deer in the headlights. But um, because it was kind of like, I think, was that was is that because that's not normally how you shoot. Right, Jeff, like normally you guys play sort of fast and loose with it. But this time was it there was like time constraints or you just like had like yeah. scripted it more before you started because you were selling the the project or I can't remember what well we, we were supposed to shoot it that summer of 2020 and then COVID happened so we um had to put a put a pin in it and in, in the interim uh Alice and I just decided to write it out but yeah we had originally written an outline which is how I've done my last three movies where it's sort of this the stories are beaded out and the dialogue is sort of like suggested and you know for the most part, kind of lightly sketched so that other people, so the actors can kind of speak in their own voices. Um, but we just decided for sake of time and, you know, the, I guess for the, to, to have the best opportunity to make this and have as much time as possible, we thought it would be a good idea to write the script. But it was pretty mean. Like my first day, I think I had to come in and do that scene where I had to like start crying during the, the what should we call it game? What was the, the mafia. mafia? Mafia. The mafia, mafia. game. Yeah. And I never yeah. met anybody on the thing. And uh, yeah, that was day one. Um, anyway, no, I mean, it just, it was amazing watching all of them. Everybody's. Um, they, everybody, every performer in it had something about uh, himself or herself that was just so kind of unique and strange and funny, just even if they did just say, you know, anything. And so 
uh, it was brilliantly cast. And I know it was people that he worked with before, but everybody seemed to slot into their different roles so perfectly. I would say that the timing actually worked out amazingly well because Alessandro's character sort of looms large over all the characters, you know, before they, before and after they meet him in the movie. So I felt like to the rest of us, it was really nice that there was this delay before Alessandro got there and we shot all these scenes kind of talking about Nick, Nick. And then when he got there, everyone had the feeling like our characters to be so excited. He's here, he's here. Uh, yeah, yeah. played out in real time <laughs> anyway yeah I mean I hope they'll have me back is the bottom line I only go to South by Southwest with comedies because the last time I was there was art, the art of self defense which was really the only other like out and out comedy that I've done but a Riley Stern's comedy is a very specific form of comedy. I feel like I don't put it into the broader category because he's such a, a like a unique uh, storyteller there. I don't even know how to classify his movies. Um, I'm a little surprised to hear that you stuck to the script so much, and in particular with your character, Molly, because you have so many moments in this movie that go on for too long, but in the best possible way. And it's like the time, the timing on it is especially well done where I get the impression that you kind of have to feel something like that out on the spot. So was that the case or was there, I guess, more precision to planning how a beat like that will play? Um, well, let's see. Um, well, like specifically the one scene where I go ask Allison to borrow clothes. Um, yeah, Jeff really let that play out. But you have to, you have to be with, you know, a, 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 two things that were great components in that scene is Allison is such an amazing actress. Like she's so good and she plays it so straight in that scene. And then Jeff knows how to shoot that comedy and not, not everybody does. Some people will not know how to do that. You, you know, they'll cut it the wrong point. Well, with Jeff, he gets that it's funny and that it's, and that playing it long makes it funnier and more awkward. So that we could improvise a little bit, right, Jeff? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, oh yeah, the, you definitely improvise the stuff about borrowing the hangers. <laughs> <laughs> but it was also like, but it was very once you were improvising while we were rehearsing it, and like the the hangers, the jean jacket, a lot of it was scripted as a long scene, and then you found yeah. a bunch of extra moments, and then we just locked them <laughs> in, and it was like it really was like choreographed because remember you had to like take the clothes in the same order every time. <laughs> it became one of those heavily was... choreographed things. It's a testament to how incredible Molly is. But I would oh say that God. all of Molly's scenes in this are slightly oh, peppered with some of her improv in the hallway when she's yelling at me, you know, when we were shooting that and Molly was like, but I could, let me have a little fun with it. We're like, go Molly, go. In the, in the room when she comes back in smoking the cigarette, I mean, you it's know, my Molly favorite. I, no that one. might be one of my favorite scenes I've ever shot, the borrowing the clothes. And then I also love when you two are really cool and I'm like, I want to hang out, you guys. Like really dorky. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> like she's so clueless that she's not wanted. And it was just a very fun character to play. Yeah, I think like you were kind of asking about working with the same people. And I, you know, I, one of the benefits of working with people is obviously you get to know them and trust them. And you get such a deeper, richer performance when you know people and when you can kind of write for them and you know how to work with them and you've done it before and everyone sort of has a rapport with each other and a shorthand. And so the benefits of working with people over and over again is that you do get to kind of go to places you wouldn't get to go with people that you've just met, but then also having new people come in like Alessandro and um, Tim and Zach Woods, the people like I absolutely respect and love and think they're amazing. Having the people that have worked there before kind of set the tone a little bit and it's sort of an easier transition for, for the newer people to kind of just slot in and sort of feel comfortable because it doesn't feel like complete chaos. It feels like there are sort of like well worked out areas and then these people can kind of come in and sort of feel at home and comfortable without sort of everyone is like flying blind. So I wanted to end with a, a festival question. I guess I, I feel I feel inclined to toss it to you, Aubrey, because we just spoke for Emily the Criminal, which is fantastic. And congratulations on that distribution deal. I was very happy for you. But 
what you like you have the opportunity to work on all these big films out there but you and and Allison and Jeff like you're so consistent on the festival circuit so what keeps you coming back to that form of filmmaking and also that way to get it out into the world because covering festivals is one of my favorite things in the world I love discovering hidden gems so to see people like you with such big platforms keep returning to it it fills my heart um I mean independent Films are my fa absolute favorite thing ever. Um, I like all kinds of movies. I love big movies and I love all, all kinds of movies, but um, there's just something about independent films for me that is probably the most fulfilling and rewarding experience um, because they just feel like miracles every time you make them. Um, and I think, you know, it's like acting is such a specific kind of, job and the way that your experiences you know with each job affect your life is so um crazy and I just always find that independent films are just they're just magical journeys every time and so um and festivals are like you know they're the best they're the best places for me because it's just packed with people that are there for the same reasons for the love of movies and I just love movies so much um so I think it's just kind of I hope I never stop getting to go to festivals because um, it's it's why I want to be in movies, really, because I want to be around, surrounded by people that, you know, love the process and, and try to make art and try to make things for, you know, about the human condition and not, you know, not try to, like, make just content or products or whatever the fuck people do, but, like, just, yeah. So, um happy to always be at a festival and um yeah it's, I it's my favorite kind of I wish I was there I'm so sad that I can't be there in person right now me too I was gonna say one more thing one more thing that that um Aubrey started and Jeff um was Aubrey worked with Michael Caine so she did this amazing thing where we would shoot but then have these big dinners after and I, I was actually just talking about you last night Aubrey to Vanessa Bayer who I'm working with and she was like oh but it really is so, because Aubrey picked that up from Michael Caine, right, Aubrey? Yes, Michael Caine put it into my head that, like, when you're shooting a movie, it's like, you know, maybe that, that's how it was in the old days. But he was like, you know, the way I do it is we shoot all day long and then every night we go to dinner. I put on my dinner jacket and we go to dinner and we have wine. And, um, and we tried to adopt that kind of approach in Italy where, you know, even though we were exhausted and all losing our minds, we just really just kind of like, you know, dove fully in and just tried to have that experience. And I think it, it really, yeah, it's like, it's the best version of filmmaking. I yeah. think we, we, we went for it. Yeah. It was really special time i love that and not enough people out there saw bestsellers that movie was a big charmer i like that one quite a bit huge congratulations to all of you on spin me around keep an eye out for it everyone thank you congratulations and enjoy the premiere